In the previous video, we assembled all the components of the AR4 MK3 robot, including the stepper motors, and tested each one individually. In this video, I'll show you how to connect each motor to its respective driver, so we can start moving the motors. Let's get started. This is the position of each driver inside the base enclosure. Secure them in place using screws. The next step is to install the fan, rocker switch, and 5.5mm power jack onto the fan cover of the base enclosure. This setup will provide the 24 volts power cable and the fan cable. After that, mount the fan cover onto the base enclosure. Next, connect the red power wire to the plus VDC terminal on the rightmost driver, and connect the black power wire to the GND terminal. To insert the wires, you'll need to remove the green terminal block from the driver and tighten the screws after the wires are in place. Then, use 5 pairs of wires to jumper the plus VDC and GND connections across all 6 drivers, as shown, making sure to include the fan power at the end. Next, I verify that power is correctly supplied to all drivers and the fan by connecting the 24 volts power supply and switching the rocker switch on. Ensure that the green indicator light on each driver turns on and the fan is spinning properly. Next is the J1 motor connection. This is the wiring for the J1 motor. You can plug the motor cable directly into the driver following the correct wire order, black, green, red, and blue. Also, connect the encoder cable, and attach the three wires to the limit switch. This is the setup condition after completing the wiring from the motor to the driver. Make sure all connections are in the correct position. For the encoder cable, only the red, black, blue, and brown wires are used, the others are not connected, you can cut them. In this video, I'll only show the wiring up to the driver. The encoder connections to the controller and the limit switch output will be covered in the next video. This is the position of the limit switch mounted on the J1 housing. For detailed wiring of the limit switch and encoder, please refer to the manual. This is the wiring for the J2 motor. We'll use an 8-core cable, 70 centimeters in length, to connect the limit switch and motor encoder. For the motor cable, an extension of 34 centimeters is needed. For the limit switch wiring, make sure the common, NC, and no terminals are correctly positioned. And this is the wiring for the J3 motor. We'll use an 8-core cable, 120 centimeters in length, to connect the limit switch and motor encoder. The motor cable also requires an additional 50 centimeters extension. The cables from J2 and J3 will be bundled together using a braided sleeve, routed toward the base enclosure. This shows the connected J2 motor cables and the mounted limit switch on the J2 housing. Make sure to use a braided sleeve for cable management, and secure both ends with heat shrink tubing for a clean finish. Here is the completed wiring for the J3 motor, starting with the limit switch connection mounted on the J3 arm, which is installed on the J3 stopper. Next is the installation of the motor and encoder cables. All cables from J2 and J3 will then be bundled into a larger braided sleeve leading to the base enclosure. Make sure to label the ends of each cable to clearly distinguish between J2 and J3 connections. Next, connect wires to the pole, gear, and opto terminals on each of the drivers. The pull and gear signals will go to the controller pins, and the opto pin should be connected to a 3 volt source. This is the wiring for the J4 motor. We'll use an 8-core cable, 117 centimeters in length, to connect the limit switch and motor encoder. The motor cable also requires an additional 55 centimeters extension. For the limit switch, we're using a smaller type. Here is the wiring setup after completing the J4 motor connection, starting with the limit switch, which has been mounted onto the limit switch holder and installed on the J4 housing. Next is the encoder wiring, followed by the motor cable extension. Next is the wiring for the J5 motor. For the J5 connection, the encoder and limit switch use separate cables due to the longer distance. The encoder requires a cable approximately 1 meter long, the motor cable extension is 75 centimeters, and the limit switch cable is 124 centimeters long. This is the wiring setup after completing the J5 motor connection. 
The encoder and motor cables are bundled together in a single braided sleeve. A J5 motor bracket has also been installed, with cable ties used to secure the J5 cables. As for the limit switch, it has been mounted in place, but its position will be adjusted later to ensure the J5 carrier properly makes contact with the switch. This is the wiring for the J6 motor. We'll use an 8-core cable, 145 centimeters in length, to connect the limit switch and motor encoder. The motor cable also requires an additional 100 centimeters extension. The limit switch used is a small type, mounted on the J6 housing. This is the condition after wiring the J6 motor. The limit switch is mounted onto the limit switch holder and installed on the J6 motor housing. Make sure the switch can be triggered by the J6 limit contact. Then, route the J6 wires and braided sleeve through the wire path in the J5 side spacer. Next, Bundle the cables from J4, J5, and J6 into a single large braided sleeve. Then, route them through the J2 wire path and continue toward the base enclosure, using the hole on the right side. Finally, connect the motor cables to the driver terminals. With this step completed, the motor to driver wiring is done, and we can now simulate motor movement with a much cleaner cable setup. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.